Okay, I'm going to talk about my demo compiler. Uh, a lot of people um, just cannot believe that I wrote a compiler, a 20,000 line, just in time, ahead of time compiler. Um, I, wrote, I did some videos, two videos on my compiler. Now I'm going to talk about a mini compiler because it seems to blow people's minds that I wrote a compiler. So let's let's talk about this. We want to hand a buffer, we're going to hand a pointer to a character buffer and we're going, this function is going to return a token. Now what a token is, is a, let's just imagine we're, we're tokenizing this line right here. So we take I64 and I64 is a token, it's an identifier the space is white space, we skip it. Lex is a token. The parenthesis is a token. U8 is a token. Star is a token. Star is a token. Underscore source is a token. Comma is a token. I64 is a token. Star is a token. Num is a token. Parenthesis is a token. Brace is a token. This white space gets skipped. Then we get a, a U8 is a token, a star is a token. So tokenizing means converting to that. Now this little compiler we're, we are working on, let's let's go ahead and run it um, just to show you what it does. So we want to enter 1 plus 2 plus 3 times 4 plus 5. Okay, this is an integer expression compiler. Now, a compiler makes machine code. That's the difference in a compiler and an interpreter. This made machine code. You see these numbers over here? This column, that's machine code. Do you know what machine code is? 48 is the prefix for 64-bit instructions. So what's going on here? We're moving a constant 1 into RAX. We're pushing it on the stack. We're moving a constant 2 into RAX. We're pushing it on the stack. We're moving a constant 3 into RAX. We're pushing it on the stack. So we've done three integers. Now we're popping 2, adding them, and pushing the result. So pop 2, add, push result. Now we're pushing another one, 4 on the stack. Now we pop 2, multiply, and push the result. Now we pop 2, add, and push the result. Now we push 5, then we pop 2, add, push the result. And then the result for the expression is this pop rax return. Okay, so um, this is a reverse Polish uh, calculator. Okay, so we push one, we push two, push three, then at this point we pop two and three and add them, and we push a five, then we uh, push four, then we pop two and multiply, so we push a 20, then we pop, okay, let's start over. So are you, are you stupid or what? Okay, how hard is this? We have one on the stack, we have one, two on the stack, we have one, two, three on the stack. We pop two and, no, what do we do? One, two, three, pop two and add. So we take uh, the top two, add them. Then we have one, five, four, take the top two, multiply. Then we have uh, 21 on the stack. Take, okay, so now what don't you understand about machine code? This is the system stack that we're pushing on. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's jump ahead to... Uh, So the Lex part gets a token. 
the compiler part puts the machine code into the buffer, the code buffer, into the code buffer. So here we have machine code. Do you see what machine code is? Do you see where it's... Do you, now that you know what we're talking about... Okay. So, Lex. So, if it gets a zero... That's not a zero. Zero is the end of the string. And if it's the end of the string, we return token end of file. If if it's a space, if it's a space, a carriage return or a new line, we advance the pointer, so we skip it. If it's a zero to nine, then we uh, multiply by ten and add add the number subtracted from z subtracting zero. This is how you convert decimal to binary. So we're scanning in ASCII numbers. And then when we we were, we put it in the number, there's a parameter, uh, there's an output that's number, and we put it in there, and uh, we uh, it, we set the we set the new source pointer because we advanced it, and then we return a token number, so that the tokens we can get are end of file number, operator, or left or right parenthesis. So these basically return advance the pointer past the past uh, the character and it returns that new pointer it or resets that new pointer and then it returns the token. Um, okay so do you understand Lex? Do you understand Lex? Okay it skips white space it combines ASCII numbers into a single number, binary, and it returns a token. Okay, so let's go to the bottom. This is the main. We print our message, we get a string, and if the string is not the end, if it's not a zero string, then we set a buffer, and we parse term. Okay, to start it, you parse a term, and then we parse until we parse will not will not end if we get an error we do a throw I, I, uh, that throws an exception then we unassemble so the user can see and then we do we free the string and start over okay so we parse term and then we parse and we, we're using a pointer to a character buffer as our source code and our destination is for code and then we execute the code we unassemble the code and then we execute the code um, in the return value on the the return value gets printed did you notice it prints the return value so if I say 1 plus 2 times 2 2 plus 2 times 3 did you see down here it prints the answer is 13 so that it, uh, this is executable machine code and it makes an execution so we're putting code into memory that was malocated and then we're calling we're doing a call we're calling that little subroutine that we compiled okay so first we have to look at parse term and parse uh, now the theory of parsing is uh, LR parsing recursive descent. Uh, basically, uh, if you have unary operators, this parse term would would parse. It. Like if if you had minus one, that would be a term. Now, if we have uh, student dot name as a I don't or student dot age or student dot score. Let's say you had a if we had a, a real compiler and we had a structure, then this would be a term, this whole thing, because um, you can see how how expressions work. So when you do modifiers, those are part of a single term. So you parse a term, and it turns out it's 
it's recursive indirectly um, so we we parse okay basically all we have to do let me just explain this all we have to do is uh, we tokenize and uh, when we get an operator we check the previous operator if it's higher we if, if the new operator is higher precedent precedence we execute immediately if so when we hit uh, two okay if we have parentheses that's already taken care of um, there, two things can happen either you execute immediately or you postpone okay um, that's all you have to know. You execute immediately or you postpone. Okay, I guess I should explain this. Now I have to think about it. Okay. So we're parsing a term. Now if you have a multiply, let's say we had 2 times 3 plus 4. I guess multiply, multiply is, if it's greater than multiply and less than the the new precedence greater than multiply and less than the new precedence greater than multiply and less than add so as long as this is an add or this is a this is a multiply term 2 times 3 is a multiply term 2 times 3 plus 4 is an add term um, the new so the uh, the weakest precedent is uh, either we keep going doing basically you either do it right away or you postpone it and uh, just work it through LR parser uh, shit. so we're parsing and when when we're um, executing that's when we're making code so if you so if you don't postpone it you code it so we're putting code and uh, that's how it works it hurts my head at the moment but anyway uh, LR parsing I think that's left recursive I've, anyway uh, just figure it out so that's how it works so I made a compiler. This malloc. Now the question is: Is this position independent? Well, hell yeah, it's position independent. Uh, <laughs> now, what if we have a sim? What if we want to call print? How would we call? Well, our print uh, is at an address. If we unassemble address print. We get our print routine. So let's say we wanted to mod. I could go ahead and do that. Do you want to modify it so that it does a print? We I could do it if it entertains you. Um, so we look in the symbol table. Let's see if we can identify uh, C hash hash function star tempi h equals uh, hash find Atom is okay. Hash find. So each task has a symbol table, and Atom is the father of all tasks. If it doesn't find it in the symbol table, it checks the parent. So it checks Atom. So we're looking for a string, needle string, haystack table, mask. So needle string is print, haystack mask is the atom task hash table um, mask HTT function hash table type function okay now we do a class rep let's just look at tempih uh, I, th I think we call it executable address F9 okay so in the symbol table it's a hash table we have the address of the print function in memory 
So if we wanted to call it, we could say call and then give that address if we gave the right parameters. Um, now, maybe you want to know what a... So a call is an E8, and then it's a relative offset. Okay, so if we wanted to call the print, then in our data table, we would put E8, and then the current address, or the, the, the print address minus the current address. And that would be a call, and we'd have to deal with the stack. Okay, so do you understand how a compiler works? Do you understand how a just-in-time is easier than a ahead-of-time? For a just-in-time, all you do, look up the instruction, and then code a freaking call. All That's all you have to do, code a call. It's not hard. It's easy. Why don't you, as an exercise, uh, I don't know, call some function in the... Uh, mini compiler okay so how hard can it be so I have a single address map for all tasks so all the code is at one location what I mean is uh, it never makes duplicate copies the address maps never change by the way I use a 2 meg page table size and I always map 128 gig and there's just one map for all tasks on all cores and uh, an address is an address and if you now you know how to uh, let's say you wanted to figure out source debugging well you would look in that you would you would look in the hash table I guess you'd have well you have to search the whole thing for to, to reverse the process going from a a uh, label to a number is easy. Going from a number to a label, you have to scan the whole thing. Anyway, uh, I, you could make a structure for that, but okay, good enough.